Hey there, and welcome back to New City. I really just want to show off New City in this video and uh, the just cool cities that will grow if you do the right thing. Um, my goal with this city, which is by far the biggest city I've uh, made so far, was just to see how many tall buildings I could get to spawn. I just wanted tall buildings, all the skyscrapers, I wanted them all, and so that's what I went for uh, in this uh, in this city. So the way that I've understood how that works is tall buildings spawn when you get sufficient density. Now density uh, again, the way I understand it is driven by, uh, I think, like, number of people within a certain area plus number of cars driving by on the road. Um, and you can see the density. It's, uh, you get a heat map of, of where all your density is. <clears throat> and you can also see if you let's... Uh, use our quarry tool on one of these buildings you can see what the density is for that particular building so it looks like I've hit peak uh, 10 density here uh, in this area which is very cool that's what I was going for um, so how how did I do that um, let's look from space at the whole city here so the overall layout, I started here in the center with residential and I had my agricultural zones out here. Uh, I didn't build any industrial for a while, um, but then when I did, I, I built them in here bordering the residential from the agricultural. Um, and I did that because I there was some comments in one of the <clears throat> one of the alerts you get in the game where it said that uh, industrial um, you know people don't want to build their factories near nothing so build your industrial near some retail or something so anyway when I started out I had some residential here had some retail out near where the agriculture was going uh, with the idea that I would put industrial there uh, when I was ready for it the whole layout is based on these different patterns uh, and they're all kind of iterations on the same theme of pattern uh, but I've got you can see this is a little bit different for the industrial and the agricultural as it is from the residential so the residential all your buildings are pretty small <clears throat> so you can get away with a very dense road network for your residential areas but as you get a lot of density, uh, you end up getting a lot of cars uh, going to and from the residences to the uh, industrial and the agricultural zone. So you need to have a good way for them to get through there in a reasonable amount of time. And the best way I've found to do that is minimize your number of intersections. And the uh, Again, the best way I've found to minimize the number of intersections is to go with these uh, traffic circles or traffic diamonds. Um, when you first start the game, you can't build one-way roads. So when I started out, these were still diamond shapes, um, but they were just your regular old uh, two-lane roads. <clears throat> and then once you unlock one-ways, you can go over those with uh, one ways going in a, a counterclockwise circle or clockwise if you wanted. I don't think it matters. Um, but then uh, I think when you first do that, there are actually stop signs spawn at each, each corner of your diamond, but then you can go over them with your uh, this uh, four lane avenue tool, you double click on the intersection and it gets rid of the stop sign and then traffic just flows smoothly right through. Um, so 
my residential pattern here. It's kind of a 10 by 10 pattern. Uh, we'll call this the Y axis, this the X axis. Um, every 10 grid spaces on the Y axis, I have a road with no intersections in it. And if you repeat this pattern, you end up with this road that goes almost the whole length of the city uh, or entirely the whole length of the city, depending on where you are. That's my university. I'll get to that later. Um, you, you have this uh, thoroughfare through through your city with no intersections. And so uh, my assumption and the reason for doing that was that uh, that's more efficient for traffic flow. Then uh, on the alternating uh, uh, spaces, um, every 10 grid spaces, uh, you have just one intersection in the middle that lets people into these uh, neighborhoods. So uh, anyway, that's kind of how I laid out the residential area to minimize intersections and end up with these uh, every 10 grid spaces you have uh, going both horizontally and vertically or on the X and Y axis um, roads with no intersections that go all the way through the city. Uh, it's worked out pretty well. I've got a good average travel time here. Uh, it tends to stay underneath an hour. It peaks uh, every once in a while as uh, more cars get on the road. Things do get a little bit backed up. Um, but it's worked pretty well so far. Um, let's see. So then I've got for the agricultural zones, I went with 5 by 25 grid spaces. Again, I've got the traffic diamonds on each of the corners, so there's no intersections. Uh, because even though it looks not very dense out here, uh, once you get to a certain population, these businesses do tend to put a lot of trucks on the road. Um, so you'll end up with uh, these roads being just parking lots of box trucks. Uh, if, if I found that I, I basically have to have these traffic diamonds or that happens inevitably. Um, the agricultural zones spawn businesses that take up quite a bit of space. And so I've stuck with the five by 25. It seems to work pretty well and uh, things tend to get packed in here pretty well. Um, for the industrial, when you start off, you have pretty big buildings spawning that take up two to three uh, grid spaces away from the, the road where you have, a, have the zones. But then um, as your city grows, the buildings start shrinking that spawn. Um, I'm not sure if that's uh, density that drives that or education or what exactly, but uh, at a certain point as your city grows, you start getting smaller, more dense industrial buildings. And so I tried to leave. Um, that's why I've kind of got these uh, unevenly sized industrial zones is so that I end up with this traffic diamond that allows me to uh, cut through the middle of this industrial zone. So this wasn't here when I first started. I just had these sides of the, you know, just really the outside of this rectangle zoned with industrial. And then um, once I started getting these, uh, all the, the bigger buildings got replaced with these smaller ones, I built this road in here so I could pack more industrial into this area, but still not really add any intersections. And this little uh, T intersection here doesn't tend to cause too many problems. Um, let's see, so uh, I've got about 12 parts residential, eight parts agricultural, one to two parts industrial, and a smattering of retail and office space. The uh, retail space, I originally I had kind of out here uh, near where the industrial zones were, uh, were set up, but uh, I ended up rezoning those to offices and then doing a bunch of retail 
in the space inside these traffic diamonds. And that seems to be working pretty well. Uh, and I've, I didn't really have a pattern to that when I started doing it. I was just doing it as needed where I noticed there was space. Um, but uh, as you know, the game went on and the city got bigger and bigger, I kind of stuck with, with this pattern you see out here, uh, filling a lot of it in with residential, but some with retail. Then the office space really, uh, because my whole goal was uh, let's get as many big giant skyscrapers as I could, I wanted to put the office space uh, where there was the highest density, which was along this main central road, which was really the first kind of central road that I built. Um, and so I ended up zoning um, a bunch of that, but not all of it yet, but eventually all of this I'll get to um, just offices all the way down this just to, to really push the density in this area. Um, the offices do have some downside. They tend to increase crime more, pollution more, and decrease your community. So um, it's a bit of a double-edged sword putting office space in there. Let's see. So one of the results of just the number of... Um, iterations of this pattern I went with and the uh, the length along the y-axis uh, of the initial zone that I put in as I ended up with on the outside is where this intersection is and so a very poor choice I made was to oh, I'll just put a, an intersection here and put some office space in here inside the industrial zone um, the problem is that this is a very high density area. You can see I've got some very big buildings here. And so, you know, at, at sometimes during the day, every one of these buildings will have like a thousand people in there. And so you can see it's already happening here now is that uh, we're getting a pretty good traffic jam up here. It doesn't really look that bad, but uh, you can kind of see what's happening here. Just the way... Um, that new city handles traffic is you know these cars are coming along here deciding uh oh I need to turn there so I'm just gonna merge into uh, this lane of cars and what you end up with are cars stacked on top of cars stacked on top of cars and you can have like 5,000 cars stacked in there let's see how many we've got right now I think I can do this nope I want to look at the road not the car there we go. So we've got 130 cars on that section of road right now, which is actually uh, not as many as I thought there might be. Now, I did put a little bit of mixed use in as well, uh, but I've started uh, phasing those out. I don't know if there's a particularly unique benefit to a mixed use zone, but the models that I'm using, and I know you can customize this, um, and I haven't delved into that very much, but just anyway, with the models that I'm using, I'm just using the uh, quote, yours mod pack that, that's default that comes with the, uh, the current version on uh, early release on Steam, there aren't any skyscraper mixed use building models. So, um, since I wanted tall buildings uh, and mixed use doesn't seem to produce any tall buildings, I've started phasing those out. Um, but I do know that I could go model some some mixed use skyscrapers, and then and then I would have what I wanted. So, uh, for a future video. Uh, other things to really drive density, if I look at density, it's kind of cool. It highlights the things I built that, that affect density in the area. Uh, these are pavilions that I've placed a bunch around, just really trying to see how high I can push the density in this area. I think this is City Hall. Uh, this is the Art Museum. Uh, I think this is another museum. Technical College. Yeah, so all that uh, increases 
density in the area around it. And so I, I kind of tried to put all those nearby, we'll call this Main Street. Um, and we've got our Grand Park here. That also increases density, but the, uh, the modeling, there's no like flat green grass you can put down. So it just shows through what's underneath. And once you get to a certain density level, uh, you don't have a nice green uh, underlay anymore. It turns brown. And so that's supposed to be a nice pretty park and uh, we'll pretend it is. There's still some nice trees there. Um, so the other thing I'll show is my university that I built out here. Um, this, let's see, when I built the university, I think the residential zone was out to here. And so uh, then I laid out this whole pattern and I, I can't remember if I had one ways available at the time or not. They're all one ways now. Uh, but again, just to cut down on intersections. And if you have, even though these one ways are completely crisscrossing, uh, you can get rid of the stop signs there and the, the drivers are just smart enough not to hit each other. Uh, the, they don't seem to mind hitting each other anyway. So the way the university works is you place down a university quad and then you can place down other university buildings within a certain radius of that university quad. And of course the building has to be along a road. So to maximize the number of university buildings I could place, I did these two by two grid squares, um, uh, five by five of those. And the university quad here in the middle and I can place university buildings all the way out, uh, out to here on this side, and you can see the university quad is on this side of this grid square. I can't place them over here in these corners, uh, just because I think that is just outside the radius of uh, how close it needs to be to the quad. Um, within this space, I was able to put all of the university colleges that are available, all the schools you can build, the business school, engineering school, um, I got all of those built, and so now, now all I can do is uh, I can build more university gardens or dorms. The um, I went with fancy dorms exclusively <clears throat> because uh, they give you a bunch of extra high school diplomas. Now I thought the basic dorms and the dorm tower did too. Maybe they just stop at some point in the growth of the city but um, that has a similar effect to building another school is you uh, you get the the benefit of the dorm plus you get a bunch of high school diplomas um, and you get a, a residential density bump I guess uh, it, it increases the maximum residential density which um, I don't know exactly how that works, but it did seem that as I would place more fancy dorms around, uh, the center of my city grew more tall buildings, uh, which is very cool. So uh, it's, uh, the same thing with the university gardens, it gives you the same max residential increase. So I've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, Five university gardens. Uh, I even stuck a uh, pavilion in here uh, just for fun. Um, there's several extra fancy dorms. You only need two fancy dorms per uh, school that you build. Um, and But I put in several extra just to get uh, kind of fill in the space and get the, the uh, increase in max residential density. Then the, the layout here is kind of cool. I came up with this. Um, you've got a few different ways to get into the university zone here. Um, you've got a road 
that comes along here. This is a two lane road. Uh, and then that leads into a one way, uh, you've got a one way loop that goes all the way around the outside of the university and then alternating one ways throughout. And it just luckily worked out th with the numbers. I didn't really plan it that way that uh, I could get alternating ones every other one and I didn't have to have any uh, repeating or uh, going head on to each other or anything. Then I have this kind of uh, fancy little uh, one-way diamond set up here. Uh, this, uh, I'm not sure where everybody's going here. I'll look at traffic here in a bit. Um, but then at some point I was noticing this whole, uh, this road here was just, completely packed with cars it seemed like there's just a ton of road traffic into the university and so I built these little shortcuts to get uh, to get people uh, over to the other side of downtown here uh, there's these just um, one-way underground tunnels that get you over to the uh, other side of downtown and then that lets them off onto this uh, traffic diamond over here so if they need to get to the far side of the town from the university they can do that without clogging up the, the main roads here uh, or they can get back from the same place so let's look at some of the metrics and how I got here so let's just look at the whole life of the city so you can see for the first 10 years, um, growth was slower. Uh, and I think that was because um, I didn't quite have enough income and I was, uh, I would like take out a three year loan, build a school and then uh, let it sit there and wait and pay off the loan. I wasn't building a whole lot there, uh, but then Somewhere around this point, I just I, I had built all the schools and had enough uh, enough cash that I didn't need to keep working off loans, and so I could just build things and let it grow as fast as it could. Um, let's see, percent with no education. This is another one. Uh, you can see when you start off. This was kind of before I had any schools. Uh, you're about 90% uneducated. Um, your very first few residents may or may not have an education. I think it's a, a probability. So it generates a random number and based on a probability of 90% whether that person has an education or not. Uh, so as you get a whole bunch of people, you'll on average, have, if I didn't build any schools, I would have 90% uh, with no education. But here I started building some schools. I kind of slowed down, population growth picked up, uh, and I just kept building more and more schools and getting that down. Um, the university really, really helps with that because the dorms, uh, you know, have a combined effect of uh, helping you with high school graduates and also, uh, you know, uh, bachelor's degrees and doctorates. But um, at some point in here, I had built all I could build for the university and you end up with a maximum of 13,000 college students and I can't figure out anything to do to get that number up so I think that this is going to be about as low as I can go I could go build a whole bunch of schools all around and maybe get that down but the population is so huge now that I would just have to build a whole bunch of schools um, which I'd be happy to do got plenty of money to do it that's for sure uh, let's see, unemployment rate, um, that was pretty high for a good portion of the life of the city. Um, and I didn't necessarily do that intentionally. Um, I just kind of let it alone and as long as the population was growing, I was okay with it. But you can kind of see it's right about when I got that down is when population growth really started to go up. The other thing is I was trying not to uh, to operate off of the loans too much. Um, 
I, I don't know if you can default on your loan or or you know lose the game so to speak because you run out of money um but i didn't want to find out i just wanted to pretend like it was a real city and i had to be responsible with the budget so um i tried to make sure that if i uh if i took out a line of credit i would kind of keep track of what year i took the line of credit out for and i'd try to get it back to z get the uh balance positive again before the end of you know whatever the term was uh, after whenever I started the, the loan. Uh, average travel time, you can see I've kept this very low the whole, the whole length of the city. Um, there were a couple times here where I had some, uh, I, I wanna say that buildings will break. <laughs> The game's early access is very early in development, and so, uh, you know, I can't pass any judgments on the game or anything. There, there's, uh, but sometimes buildings will break and they will get like uh, 10,000 people inside a single building. And that will, uh, eventually all those people will start pouring out and it will just completely overwhelm. I can't imagine you could build a road network that could handle all that. And so that happened a few times throughout here. I'd have to go searching for, you know, okay, what building broke? And you just demolish it and it'll either respawn or you can rebuild it. I think I had four or five of the dorm buildings in the university do that. And so I had to demolish them and then rebuild them uh, after the traffic cleared. And so I'd always get back to, you know, around 30 minutes average travel time. Um... Let's see, I think that's about all the important metrics um, that I pay attention to as I'm growing the city. Um, the other one, and just to kind of show you what's happening with the traffic now, this is, uh, seems I've seemed to have hit somewhat of a peak with this particular layout of the city. Um, I saved this uh, I saved the city, it's about 590,000 where I saved it, and inevitably at 605,000 the traffic seems to kind of break down. So if I look at the vehicles on the road, um, yeah, we've now hit the max limit 60,000 vehicles on the road. Uh, you can see within the last day it went from 340 all the way up to 60,000. So I don't know... Um, I've tried a few things trying to avoid that happening, demolishing some stuff before it happens, and there just doesn't, uh, I'm not sure what happened, but uh, this will give you a good example of, of what goes wrong with traffic is, uh, now you can just see all of these agricultural buildings have just started pouring out box trucks. And it's really, uh, I haven't figured out what I can do to fix that. Plus. Uh, the game really starts to lag because it's uh, processing, you know, 10 times more cars than uh, it was at any other time during the simulation. So anyway, um, that was my goal, was to just, how big can I build a city? Uh, what, uh, what different amenities can I unlock? I made it to the stadium. We've got our, our ballpark here uh, out by the university. That you get at 500,000. Super happy when we got that. Um, and uh, I seem to, you know, I, I met my goal. I seem to have uh, reached the peak of, of where I could get uh, this particular city design in terms of traffic. I, I seem to have uh, uh, reached the limits, which that was my goal. So I'm happy I consider that a win. Uh, just a teensy bit disappointed, you know, as you get, uh, as you get higher and higher up there in terms of population, you want to see how much bigger it'll go. And I certainly had plenty more space to play with, uh, but, uh, but that's okay. I'm still, still pretty happy with, uh, with how this turned out. So anyway, hopefully that was interesting. Uh, maybe it's just, uh just cool to look at the uh 
the big buildings that spawn. Um, that's really all I wanted. So, um, yeah, I hope, hope uh, maybe there is something educational in terms of if you're playing New City and uh, want to do the same thing I did. Uh, there's all my secrets. But uh, if you have a question about anything, don't hesitate to put it in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button. I'd appreciate it. And I will end it there. I'm Zombie Greedo. Thanks for watching. And as always, Han shot first.